about the circuitry and discrete as opposed to chips and the trends in analog now where people aren't really, not many people are making, quote, real, true analog these days? Well, I think that there's a misconception about whether an analog circuit, an analog synthesizer circuit has chips or not. Um, there's nothing wrong with chips as long as the, their limitations are understood. In fact, the original SEM was full of uh, integrated circuit op amps and worked very well. Um, the, the, however, the, the main philosophy of the new SEM was to make it as much as possible like the old SEM. And so rather than redesign it or try to make it, quote, better, I pretty much stuck with the old design. Uh, it's, I'd say, 98% like the old. It's identical in 98% of the old original design. It uses chips where the old one used chips, and it uses discrete parts where the old one used discrete parts. And so it's pretty much the same basic circuitry. A couple changes I had to make because a couple parts were not available anymore. Uh, but I've had several people uh, with better ears than me uh, test the new one and the old one, and as everybody seems to agree it sounds pretty much, the new one sounds pretty much like the old one. But circuitry-wise, functional, functionally, it's just like the old SEM. Uh, the front panel is exactly the same except for a couple very minor things, uh, and you can actually uh, with a very small amount of uh, work, you can put a new SEM in an old Oberheim. You mentioned the front panel. Let's talk about the changes you have made in the new version. Um, obviously, if you can see this, uh, there's a patch panel here. Right. Like I said earlier, the, the original SEM was this. And if it was an SEM, you got this. If it was a four voice, there were four of these, etc. Um, but during the process of, um, uh, of redoing the SEM, I was encouraged by a number of people to, who knew how the SEM was, was designed in that it had a lot of uh, internal points on connectors on the internal board to bring that out to a patch panel. And so that's what we have here. There are 33 points uh, on the internal circuitry of the SEM that are bought, brought out to these um, uh, 3.5 millimeter mini jacks. Um, it's pretty much the whole, the whole machine right there on the patch panel. Um, uh, one could say, well, I'll never use this or I'll never use that, but rather than commiserate over what to leave out, I put it all in. And it's 33 different points. Some are inputs, some are outputs. Um, uh, and it makes it kind of fun. Just this and a few patch cords, it's kind of it's kind of fun. Like the old 2600 is fun. They, they, yeah, I, I found that I could, just with two like two patch cords yeah. or three patch cords, you can make sonic well, here, mayhem very you quickly. Can, you, you can make a lot of sound without any patch cords, but then there's a few things here that you can try and add, maybe add something. Um, but the other, the, the only other real change, uh, or a couple minor changes on this panel as opposed to the original SEM, is the original SEM had a single frequency pot, but it had a mechanical vernier. So you, if you turn the outside of the, the big knob, it would make major changes, and then there was a smaller knob, which was actually just a, a gear, kind of a gearing arrangement that still moved a single pot, but it it geared it down so you could do fine tuning. Like an old EMS. Yes, but the problem is that you know all you have to do is bump that thing and it changes the pat the pitch and they get they get ratty and mm -hmm. I hated that thing. That was one of the my biggest complaints about the design of that. So what I did is I went to a, a coarse uh, pot. The, the major changes with this knob and then for fine tuning. You Right, and, here. and from what I, I use in the Proto, it, it, the ranges are set up really nice, so it's yeah, really this easy is to about, dial in. Yeah. About plus and minus uh, a whole tone, and this is about four or five octaves. Here. Right, right. And 
then the other change was uh, on the original SEM, this uh, filter mode pot um, was like it is here, a low pass all the way to the left and a high pass on the right, and notch in the middle, but then it had a, uh, a switch like on a, on a radio. You'd, flip, you'd turn this and it'd click and you'd have the band pass and that, I like, just couldn't get that pot. So I made the band pass a separate switch. And other than that, it's exactly like the original. Mm -hmm. And and I should mention also that the the notch. This is like a when you when the filter's going, you can switch from low pass mode to high pass mode. And instead of it being a switch, it, it continuously goes, which is a, a really neat sound when you sweep that manually. Yeah. And something I haven't really heard another synth. Right. Well, I don't know of another synth that has that. Yeah. Let's discuss the, uh, the alternative version where this patch panel will be replaced by um, a MIDI to CV yeah. converter. Yeah, the, it's the same size panel. Basically, um, what we're selling or what we're producing and selling are two different products. Uh, the, the, the expander, uh, the SEM expander module is identical in both uh, models, both versions. Right. But in the, in the other version, this panel here is replaced by a, a MIDI to CV converter that has a number of features. Um, of course, you can set the MIDI channel. You can uh, uh, you can set a switch that determines whether, as you play the, the keyboard, that whether the voice re-triggers. You can set high note priority, low note priority, or the latest note priority. Mm -hmm. um, there are actually two control voltages generated. One is devoted to the keyboard control. Uh, the other one, ha uh, control voltage, has um, three different uh, sources and three different destinations. So you have, it's like a crude version of matrix modulation, uh, a very simple uh, one, uh, one uh, bus. Uh, but there are three, three different things you can choose uh, uh, and three destinations. And then it has um, a five position transpose, it has a portamento, analog portamento, and it has a gain control for a preamp that you can enter a analog voltage which then goes over and can be selected as, um, as going into the filter here on the SCM through the external. For processing input. external sources. Right. But you can do that with this version as well. Minus the preamp. You can do that. <laughs> yeah, you can do that without the control. The, right. There's no preamp because right. this, this on this version, the patch panel version, this is totally passive. There's no circuitry in here. Right. This is just connecting to points on the board. Mm -hmm. On the MIDI to CV version, there's actually a, a preamp and, and there's a preamp gain control, so you have some control over what you do with that as far as going into here. Did you plug a guitar into it, that kind of thing? Does it have enough gain uh, to do that? It, it'll have plenty of gain. Wow. Yes. Great. Thanks for talking to me sure. today. And uh, we're audiomidi.com. We, they're shipping now. We, uh, we're hoping to get more soon. And uh, Very soon. Yeah. And uh, if you have any questions, give us a call. And uh, thanks for being with us, Tom. Mitch, thank you. Thanks, sir.